All right, y'all, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but getting ready to go race this uh, AHRMA post vintage cross country race. So, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm excited about it. So, it's pretty neat. Yep, we got the GoPro on, so hopefully, we'll have some footage of that. Camera this, recording camera. Dun, 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 dun. It's like Inception. It's a paradox, I'm telling you. Are you excited? Anyways? Yeah. Are you excited about your race next weekend? I'm excited about your race next weekend. I'm all nervous now. Are you? Yeah. Are you going to record your race next weekend too? Yeah. Can I have my gloves? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey guys, this is Preston with Crooked Shack and welcome to episode two of my moto vlog series. Uh, this week we are at a national AHRMA vintage, post vintage weekend in New Blaine, Arkansas. And I was racing in the uh, John Penton Preston Petty National Cross Country. Uh, I raced in the post vintage 200 class intermediate, which um, whenever I went to sign up, I told them I didn't really have any race experience before or whatever and they uh, said well, well we'll go ahead and put you in intermediate and if your lap times are low enough we'll take you down to novice if they're fast enough we'll bump you up to expert otherwise you're probably going to be an intermediate you know and blah 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 so here we are on the starting line and we're getting ready to take off and I was super nervous this was my first uh, first cross country or hair scramble race if you will I was definitely excited anyway check this out very very happy with my start I probably should have paced myself a little bit better what happened was I, I, I got the jump on everybody got a good start and then I got passed but check this guy out um, I know his last name is Veter. I'd have to look him up. Uh, but anyway, long story short, that guy right there that just passed me on my left and he's in front of me right now with the orange vest was racing in the post vintage 70 plus class. Uh, he's at least 70 years old and he just killed it all day Saturday. Um, that was the last, this up here in just a minute when he gets away from me is the last time I saw him. Um, I guess until he lapped me because I'm, I'm pretty confident he lapped me once because he had another lap in for the day than I did and anyway it's kind of uh, neither here nor there but the guy is really good and not not just good for 70 plus like he's just a really good rider in general and it just so happens to be a bonus that he's over 70 so uh, anyway here we are kind of going down the trails um, my nerves were just shot at this point like I was super excited and a little bit tense and so I'm just trying through through here I'm just trying to breathe and remind myself hey you're out here to just ride and have fun yes it's a race but you're only doing it uh, to go out and just do it so um, just enjoy yourself and I kept kept telling myself that reminding myself that and um, kind of got choked up in a couple spots like on some of these trees and stuff and I'm not I'm not sure you know again first time doing any of this stuff I'm not sure if any of the other guys out there Saturday had that same problem but there were some places where my uh, handlebars were like they seemed too wide and <laughs> it's I just put narrower handlebars on there so if anybody watches this you know or whatever uh, just remember when you're watching this I'm a beginner racer the whole goal is to start out here, have a good time. If I get better, I get better. If I don't, I don't. I enjoy riding and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, fast forward through some of this and I'll show you guys some of the highlights from, uh, uh, from this race and then show you the end results. And then if you are interested, I'm gonna go ahead and upload raw GoPro footage. My race was Overall, everybody kind of had different times, um, but overall, I, I raced for, I want to say it was an hour and eight minutes or an hour and nine minutes, 
So it'll be a long video, but we're going to go ahead and upload that on here on the Crooked Shack YouTube channel. So if anybody is interested in watching the whole race from the GoPro, you know, point of view perspective, you're more than welcome to. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about some of these other things that happened during the race. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I did preparing for this race was played with different tire, uh, like air pressures in my tires. Uh, the, the week prior to this race, last week, and I thought I had it pretty well figured out because of the weather and everything else, and I thought, well, this race is in Arkansas, and, you know, plus there's no rain, the, the dirt should be about the same, and I was wrong. I never should have assumed that it would be, and what ended up happening was I got out here, and this dirt was, like, super loose, and I had my tire pressures all wrong. I, I honestly think that I had my rear and my front tire pressure way too high. So I had to kind of adjust a little bit. Um, it felt a little bit washy. Uh, it's kind of, I don't know, I could be completely wrong on what was causing it to feel that way. Here we are coming up on the first creek crossing. That was pretty cool. It was actually kind of a sight for sore eyes. It was super, super hot out. And, um, and when I say that, I mean like, mid 90s and up yesterday if this tells you anything the race was day before yesterday okay yesterday september 16th was 99 degrees okay i don't know about where you live and of course it's not unusual for it to be 100 degrees in arkansas but for it to be 100 degrees in arkansas on september 16th that just seems crazy I came around this corner right here and hit this straight stretch and could see dust in front of me, so I got excited about that. I thought, okay, so I may not be in last. I may not be going slowest, so that kind of made me feel good. But then after that, I'm going through here and I'm thinking, well, what if I'm riding too fast? What if I burn myself out? I'm still in the first lap. So I start looking for mile markers and I, again, I start breathing and I try to just kind of pace myself. Again, all new experience. Here we are coming up on the second creek crossing on the first lap. This one was kind of fun because it crossed this creek bed at an angle and it was just neat and sometimes down there at the end you could probably see that uh, UTV or side by side or whatever up there. People would be sitting down there kind of watching us cross through it and stuff. That was kind of neat. So. There's a spot coming up here in just a second. You'll see I should have chosen a better line. Mm, yeah, way too tight. There's no reason for me to go through there. I should have went to the right where the rest of the uh, ruts and stuff from other racers were at. That's okay. I can see dust up ahead of me again here in this section and uh, it's kind of sandy. It was really, really loose here too. And this was a pretty fun downhill. Uh, this wide angle GoPro doesn't really do it justice, but it's a pretty, pretty steep little downhill into that creek bed. Nothing crazy, but it was pretty fun. The dust kind of gave me some hope though. You know, we'd get into these tight spots and I'd start seeing dust again. So I thought, well, maybe I'm doing good in, in the tight stuff or, or at least doing better in the tight stuff than what I'm telling myself. I don't know. For anybody that goes and watches the raw GoPro footage of the entire race, one thing I hope you notice is that as I got relaxed and more comfortable, even though I was extremely hot and tired by the end of the race, I did get faster. Um, I don't know if it was a matter of 100% with just getting comfortable or if maybe I was kind of figuring the race course out. I will tell you that all the way up until the end, I was definitely still anxious. I, I was able to relax some and I did have a great time. It was a lot of fun, but um, I still had a little bit of jitters. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what contributed to it. Hopefully, um, I'll get to race again soon and we'll see what happens next time and just kind of go from there. There was some pretty tight spots on this race course. I know I've said that a couple times, but, uh, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with me being a beginner, but I seem to get kind of like slowed down a lot by them. And um, 
<clears throat> it's not like I had a real fast pace to begin with, but I did did the math after the race was over, and the course was five miles long. Okay, and my lap times, they like I said, they did get faster. The first one, I want to say, was like 23 or 24 minutes. I don't know if you saw how bad I took that corner or not, but um, did not see it coming, and I just about wiped out. But uh, anyway, the course is supposed to be five miles long, and with my lap times, I averaged out to about 12 miles an hour. I, I mean, yeah, it was 12 and a half miles an hour. The guy that won overall had the fastest and completed the most laps, did an average of 20 miles an hour. And then the guy that I showed you at the beginning uh, that passed me on my left that was in the uh, Post Vintage 270 plus class, uh, his average speed was, uh, it was either 15 or 17 miles an hour. So, um, and I, I wasn't the slowest person out there. Um, I will say that, but I, there's just so many places where I know I could have gone faster. And, you know, like I was just talking to you about a minute ago, it's kind of like, I, I, I guess it was a combination of nerves and, you know, my, my, where my skill level is at. So it's one of those things where you, you can be riding by yourself and ride hard for a long time and not make mistakes, but it's kind of like, I don't know if anybody else does it or not, but when I'm competing at something or whatever, I kind of put a little bit more pressure on myself, I guess you could say. Maybe that's part of why I was making mistakes. And the next time I do race, if I can relax a little bit more, maybe that'll help. Give, give me some feedback. What do you guys think? What do you do? Any, any of you that race or have raced, uh, I'd be open to any, any pointers that you could give me. Uh, that spot right there, basically what I did was I got a little bit ahead of myself, was going as odd as it is, a little too fast for that section, and I kind of ran off into some briars there, so got it fired up, and that first guy that came through, he checked on me, he asked if I was alright and stuff, and I gave him a thumbs up, so a few of these guys got around me, I actually ended up getting back around the first one and the third one, the second one I didn't, anyway, later in the race, but... I ended up finishing ahead of two of those three. But there were some sections on this race course that just flowed so nice. And and uh, the, the pine areas, which there's a few pine trees here, but we're not quite into it yet. There's a, there, later in the race course, there's a uh, pretty heavily wooded pine forest, I guess you could call it. And it, it was one of the flowiest sections of the track. Uh, right there in that spot, I did the same thing again that I did back there where I got stuck in the briars. I was going a little too quick, and I, the, what I was doing was looking at the ruts and the tire tracks from the previous day's race and where the racers had already gone ahead of me, because this is my first time around this track, instead of looking at the signs. And after that, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to slow down again. This is still the first lap. Take a deep breath and just look at the signs, look at the arrows, and that is something that watching other people's YouTube videos and stuff, they talk about all the time. You know, you've got to be able to not just read the trail, you got to read the signs, because if not, you can just end up running off the course or getting hurt, so I'm lucky I didn't. And through here, this that section we just went through was one of those spots where I could have went so much faster. Right here, took off hard out of here, Got up into like third or fourth gear and then just started cruising. Of course, part of it too was, goes back to my poor cardio and like not being hydrated and stuff like that. I would uh, reach up and put the hose from a hydration pack in my mouth and, you know, in the spots where I should have just had the thing pinned. Probably could have made up a lot of time that way. But that's okay. I'm going to start, you know, working out, exercising and stuff, try to get in better shape before my next race and um, work on getting hydrated a few days in advance instead of just the day before and um, stuff like that. Hopefully those kinds of things will help. Um, arm pump was a little bit of a problem and I've figured out watching these GoPro videos while editing what part of my problem is. 
Uh, for one, my, my clutch hand, that arm gets a little sore. It's just part of it. Uh, but I have this habit of like blipping the throttle every time I pull a clutch in. No idea why I do it. There's not really a reason for it, but uh, it makes my right arm tired. And it's one of those things where like, um, I don't know, like Graham Jarvis, for example, races in the World Enduro Super Series. I watch a ton of his videos and stuff. Of course, he's got a trials background and he's like, you know, extreme level you know, not just an athlete, but racer and rider. And uh, anyway, one of the things he talks about is conservation of energy. You know, every little thing you do that expels energy in a long, strenuous activity is going to wear you down faster. And I guess that, you know, as silly as it seemed to me before without really putting it into uh, perspective for myself or having it for like a force perspective type situation like this I never really thought about like just little stuff like that and uh, you know another thing that would probably really help with that that everybody always says but I'm just kind of trying to figure it out for myself I don't have a better rider around to really teach me so I just have to watch other people and stuff because I notice a lot of other people hold the bike more with their legs and my old XR200 I mean, maybe my legs are too long, I don't know, but it's it's one of those, I, I can't really grip it with my legs. Like, if I'm standing up, the seat is, like, just not in a position where I can squeeze it with my legs. So, I do take up too much grip with my hands. I could probably change some of that by moving the peg position and changing handlebar rise. And that's something I'll probably end up playing with. Um, that was the timing gate that we just came through there, so... Uh, another thing that this bike needs really, really bad is uh, suspension rebuild. The rear shock is still good, but the front forks are just horrible. Uh, they're just worn out. I mean, I've, I've changed the oil in them, and, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, but they could use they could use a good rebuild. I don't know if you saw me just about wipe out there. But anyway, after going through the timing gate back there, that was uh, the end of the first lap. Coming into here, I was kind of going slower this lap. I went way faster second and third lap. I didn't know if it went back around to the whole shot here or if it went off the track. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, off over onto the grass motocross track. Um, so I know some cross country or hair scramble races utilize the motocross track, so didn't really know what to expect. But um, so anyway, come back around. This is where the whole shot was at. I'm getting ready to start lap number two. Um, and I'm not going to show you lap number two or lap number three in this video. If you're interested, you can go. I'll put the link up again. You can go watch uh, the raw GoPro footage of the entire race. I'll just upload the whole thing and you know let y'all watch it. I'll probably do the video in two parts just to make it easier to upload and make it easier on anybody that wants to watch it if anybody even watches it um, but yeah I ended up turning out okay I thought I came in third in the post vintage 200 intermediate class and then I came in 28th overall out of 37 bikes in the post vintage cross country race so I'm pretty pleased with that um, Dita has, like we said at the beginning of this video, has a race coming up this upcoming weekend with the Arkansas Cross Country Series, and he's going to be racing ATVs in the uh, Junior Pro. Um, he'll race the long course, but it's only a one-hour race where everybody else will be racing an hour and 45 minutes. And um, I may race in their hair scramble on Sunday. Not 100% sure yet, you know, again, there's my bike needs things. My bike and I, neither one of us are competitive with a lot of these young guys on modern bikes, you know, especially racing for an hour and 45 minutes. I don't know if I can do it, but I really want to do it. I just want to do it. It's like brutal punishment for me because I am in such bad shape. Like, never mind. I don't, I don't care if I come in last place. If I finish the race, I'm trying to have a good time, but... I don't know. I'll think about it, and you know, if I end up doing it, then you'll see it. And if nothing else, um, it won't be in this particular moto vlog series. But here on the Crooked Jack channel, you will see uh, GoPro footage and video of uh, Dida's AXC race next weekend. So y'all cross your fingers for him. Wish him luck. He's training real hard right now, and let's just hope he does good. 
Appreciate you guys watching and uh, tune in again next time. Thanks.